Hey there, good morning everybody. It is Thursday, the 15th of April. Normally tax day, isn't it? This is the day the IRS says you have to have your taxes in, except this year they pushed it by a month. I think it's actually May the 17th now, 15th. I don't know what's the deal, but anyhow, uh, that doesn't matter. That doesn't pertain to our devotion. My mind just runs wild sometimes. Hey, our revival is over. And on one hand, we're sad to see it pass. On the other hand, we need some rest. <laughs> it's been an exciting time last week. Boy, we worked really hard getting the auditorium decorated and set up for our spring program. And uh, then we went right into the revival on Sunday. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, went soul winning every day, had services every day. And uh, the week ended with 14 people uh, having made professions of faith in Christ, 14 salvations, <clears throat> excuse me, and then four baptisms. <clears throat> uh, pardon me. So 14 and 4, salvations and baptisms, can't uh, fault any of that, and we're grateful for Brother Areza and his time with us. We had a great week, and uh, it was the kickoff to our spring program, so we got seven more weeks. Of course, they won't be quite that intense, but uh, praise the Lord. What a great time. God was good to us, and we're thankful to see him work and to be used, and I think people were strengthened and helped throughout the course of the revival meeting as well. All right, so we're in uh, Romans chapter number 10 this morning, and of course, part of the Romans road are verses 9 and 10 and 13. And there's a lot of good information in here, but the overall idea of this chapter, remember we told you yesterday, we started a three-chapter section of Romans that's talking about God's dealing with the Jews. Yesterday in chapter 9, we saw God's past dealing with the Jews and how he dealt with them there. In chapter 10, it's God's present dealing with the Jews. And I'll give you two guesses as to what chapter 11 is. It's God's future dealing with the Jews. So much of this chapter is just talking about salvation by faith and how the Jews are trying to earn salvation through the keeping of the law and how that's going to hurt them in the long run. So let's pray and we'll jump right into this one. Father, thank you for this book and thank you for what we call the Romans Road, the way that this book lays out clearly salvation and what we need to know and understand uh, in order to be saved. I pray your blessing on our study today. Give us the mind of Christ. Give us wisdom. Help us to have a deeper understanding of our relationship with you. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Romans 10, verse number one. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. So he's talking to saved people. He's talking to fellow Jews, maybe. That softens the blow a little bit, that brethren. It's a term of endearment, of closeness, because he's about ready to hit them with a whammy. He's telling them that they're lost. And I'll tell you, it's very important for people to understand that they're lost, if they don't understand or believe they're lost, they have no, pardon me, nothing to get saved from. And so I'm watching myself <laughs> on the screen. There's a little delay. Anyway, uh, his prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. He wants to see his own people come to the knowledge of salvation in Christ. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. So a zeal of God is, is activity for God, busy for God. These people are doing something, but they're, they're doing the wrong thing. They have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. And so what they're doing is what they think they ought to be doing, which is the opposite of what they ought to be doing. They're trying to earn their salvation. They're trying to do good works so they can earn God's favor and, and have forgiveness. That's not how it works. They don't have the knowledge of faith in Christ. Verse 3, for they, <clears throat> being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And therein lies the problem. It's what we just said. They're trying to build up their own righteousness, keep the Mosaic law, and get God's attention that way rather than <clears throat> submitting themselves to the righteousness of God. Verse 4, For Christ is the end of the law 
for righteousness to everyone that believeth. And so Christ came to show us that the law was not the way we earn or get our righteousness. We get it through faith in him. So the Jews are trying to work their way to heaven, but you can't work your way to heaven. Salvation is by grace through faith. Verse 5, For Moses describeth the righteousness, which is of the law, that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, Say, not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Let me flip over. I want to complete this thought before we talk about it. Am I flipped? I'm not flipped. I got pages stuck together. Verse number eight. But what saith it? The word is right, is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So let's back up since we disrupted all that. The righteousness, Moses describeth the righteousness, verse five, which is of the law that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. So Moses gives the law to the people, and he tells them if you keep these things, that's the righteousness that God is looking for. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, who shall ascend into heaven and bring Christ down? Who shall descend and bring him up? Talking about the incarnation of Christ, his birth at Bethlehem, and the resurrection of Christ, his coming back bodily from the dead. But what saith it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So he's saying, look, Moses said this law is what God was looking for, but it's not what he's looking for. That law was to show you that you can't attain salvation. You fall short of it. And so Christ came and he gave his life and he died and was buried and he rose again. And they're saying, look, there'll be no other Messiah to come down. And there'll be no other Messiah to come up. There'll be no more incarnation. There'll be no more resurrection. That's already happened. So how does this salvation by faith come? This forgiveness through faith, it comes through two things. The belief in your heart and the confession with your mouth. That's verses 9 and 10. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, believe in thine heart, thou shalt be saved. Saved from hell, saved from our sins, saved to heaven. So we believe in our heart, we confess with our mouth. True heart belief results in confession of the mouth. No one believes in their heart and then doesn't tell others. Verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. When we put faith in Christ, uh, that faith is true and genuine and real. And it's legitimate. We then tell others about it. We're not ashamed of the Lord. Uh, here I am on Facebook here. Uh, who knows how many people will, will see this devotion or hear it. And what am I doing? I'm expressing my faith in Jesus Christ. When you're a Christian, you're not ashamed of of your faith. Verse number, uh, let's see here, 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all <clears throat> is rich unto all that call upon him. And so Jew and Gentile, that's what he's saying, Jew and Greek, there's no difference. Now the Jew doesn't like to hear that so much. The Greek is glad to hear it. Uh, there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. The, they get saved the same way. And today it's true. The Jews get saved the same way the Greeks get saved today, or the Gentiles get saved today, or vice versa. Verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And we use that when we're witnessing to people. Whosoever means anybody, Jew or Gentile, shall call upon the name of the Lord, not keep the law, not fulfill Moses' law, 
just call upon God in faith, shall be saved. Verse 14. Now the importance here of getting the gospel out. We've seen the gospel present all through this chapter. We've seen it it, it being given. We've seen it being been rejected. We see that uh, it's not m- through the Mosaic law, that it's through faith. We see that it's belief in the incarnation and resurrection of Christ that uh, that makes it so, and now we're going to get up into evangelism here, the preaching of the gospel, and how we need to get the gospel out to others. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And so here's a reverse progression of things <clears throat> that's getting to the point of the need for preachers of the gospel. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? If they haven't believed on Christ, they're not going to call on him. And how shall they believe in him and who they've not heard? They can't believe on him unless they've heard about him first. And how shall they hear without a preacher? There has to be someone who tells them. And when we read this, we're not talking about preachers by occupation or pastors. We're talking about any Christian who proclaims the gospel to others. And this is where you ladies can be preachers. Now we're told that God doesn't want <clears throat> ladies preaching and teaching, usurping the authority of, of men, leadership in the church. But when it comes to soul winning and getting the gospel out, we can all be preachers and we need to be preachers. Verse number 15, <clears throat> and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. In fact, the word gospel means good news. So we we bring forth the gospel, we take it to other people. And by the way, that's been God's plan for all of these thousands of years regarding the church. His plan has been take the gospel to the people. So many churches just want to put a sign up and put the words, you're invited on it and consider that their witness. That's not good enough. God didn't just tell us to invite people in and we'll tell them. He said, go to them. And that's what soul winning is. That's what we've been doing the last four days. It's what we'll do again tonight. We'll we'll get on a bus. We'll go to a neighborhood. We will take the gospel to people. We don't wait for them to come to us. Verse number 16, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is very important verse. Uh, First off, talk about it in terms of salvation and soul winning. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The gospel has to be taken and it has to be preached to people. And that's what will give them the faith to put into Christ. It also works just in regards to the strength of our daily faith. When we go to God and we, or I'm sorry, we go to church, we hear the word of God preached. We have personal devotions. We read the word of God. It strengthens our faith. This right here, you and I are strengthening our faith right now because we are hearing the word of God. And it's making your faith stronger, making my faith stronger. Verse 18, but I say, have they not heard? This is speaking about the Jews now. Have the Jews not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. And by a foolish nation, I will anger you. This means that God will go to the Gentile nations, excuse me, and offer the gospel to them. And that will make Israel jealous. Hey, how how are other nations following our God? How are Gentile nations coming to worship our God? He's our God, not their God. And so God's using getting the Gentiles the gospel to provoke Israel to come to him through the gospel. Verse 20, But Isaiah uh, is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. 
I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me, saying, you know, these Gentile people, they, they didn't even look for God, but God came to them. God brought it to them. Verse 21, but to Israel he saith, all day long am I stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. And so this whole chapter really is about Israel rejecting salvation through Jesus Christ, insisting instead to go about it through the works of the Mosaic law. And we see that salvation comes by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, and there'll be no other Messiah. He is the Messiah. There'll be no new incarnation or new resurrection. He is the one. And anyone who is saved will be saved by turning to Christ and trusting him as the Son of God who died in our place by faith. All right? That's it in a nutshell. Amen. Thanks for watching this morning. As always, like, love, share the post. Get the word out there, please. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow morning for God's future dealings with Israel. Thank you for watching. Have a great Thursday. If you're local, we're still going soul winning tonight at 7 o'clock on the soul winning bus. We'd love to have you join us. God bless you. Have a great Thursday.